So in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve absolute value equations algebraically. So what is an absolute value? So remember, the absolute value tells the distance of a number from zero on the number line. So if we're taking the absolute value of a positive number, like the absolute value of three, that's going to equal that number itself. So the absolute value of three is equal to three. The absolute value of a negative number will be the opposite of that number. So if we're taking the absolute value of negative four, that's going to equal positive four because negative four is four units away from zero. The absolute value of zero is zero because zero is zero units away from zero on the number line. So this gives us three possibilities when we're solving absolute value equations. So suppose we're solving the equation, the absolute value of x equals c, where c is some constant. Well, if c is positive, then we're going to have two solutions. So for example, if we have the absolute value of x equals 4, that means that we can have x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. And you may be wondering why that's true. Well, if we think about it, the absolute value of x equals 4 is saying find a number x that's 4 units away from 0. Well, we know that both 4 and negative 4 are 4 units away from 0 on the number line. So if c equals 0, we'll have the absolute value of x equals 0, and the only solution to that is x equals 0, because 0 is the only number that's 0 units away from 0 on the number line. And then finally, if c is negative, the equation will have no solutions, because if we have the absolute value of x equals negative 5, well, we know that distance cannot be negative, right? So that means that there's no number that's negative 5 units away from 0 on the number line. So here's how we're going to solve absolute value equations. We're going to start off by isolating the absolute value using inverse operations. And then, so let's start off with this example. So here it's asking me to solve for x. And the nice thing about this equation is that it already has um, the absolute value isolated. Okay, so I just go ahead and break this now into two separate equations. So remember, this is going to give me 2x minus 1 equals 7 and 2x minus 1 equals negative 7. So now I can go ahead and solve these two equations for x. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And when I add 1 to both sides, that's going to give me 2x equals 7 plus 1, which is 8. So now to solve for x, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And when I divide both sides by 2, that's going to give me x equals 4. Now let me go ahead and solve this other equation. So I start off by adding 1 to both sides. And when I add 1 to both sides, that's going to give me 2x equals negative 7 plus 1, which is negative 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give me x equals negative 3. So now I need to go back and check my solutions in my equations. So I'm going to go ahead and first plug in x equals 4. So that gives me 2, the absolute value of 2 times 4 minus 1 equals 7. So that's going to be the absolute value. And remember, an absolute value is like parentheses. So I'm going to do this first, this 2 times 4 minus 1. So 2 times 4 is 8. So I have 8 minus 1. And I'm checking if that equals 7. Well, that tells me that the absolute value of 7 equals 7, which is actually true. All right, now let's try the second solution. So we have the absolute value of 2 times negative 3 minus 1 equals 7. So we have the absolute value of negative 6 minus 1 equals 7, which tells me that the absolute value of negative 7 equals 7. And that's also true. So I know that both of these solutions are valid for my absolute value equation. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So in this example, we once again have it equal to a positive number, 17. So we can go ahead and separate into two equations. So we have x plus 9 equals 17 and x plus 9 equals negative 17. That gives us two solutions, which are 8 and negative 26. And when we plug them back into the original equation, we can see that both solutions will work. So we have two solutions to this equation. So now let's try this example. So you can see what's different here is that my absolute value is not isolated, right? It has this extra plus 2 with it. So whenever we have this kind of situation, our first step will always be to work on isolating the absolute value. So my very first step before I do anything else is going to be to go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. So when I subtract 2 from both sides, I get the absolute value of x equals 5 minus 2, which is 3. 
So now, since I have the absolute value isolated, I can go ahead and separate it into two equations. Okay, so before you do the separating step, you always want to make sure the absolute value is isolated. So this is going to give me two equations, which are x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So now let me go ahead and check these solutions in my original equation. So that tells me the absolute value of 3 plus 2 equals 5, which tells me that 3 plus 2 equals 5, which is true. My second solution tells me the absolute value of negative 3 plus 2 equals 5, which is basically saying that 3 plus 2 equals 5, which is also true. So both of my solutions will work for this equation. So this equation will have two solutions. So let's try this example. So you'll see here we don't have my absolute value isolated, right? Because it has this extra fluff because it has this 2 with it. So my very first step is going to be to isolate the absolute value. Remember, if this 2 is written like this, it's multiplying the absolute value. So the inverse operation will be to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that's going to give me the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Okay, so since 5 is a positive number, I can separate this into two equations. So I have x plus 3 equals 5, and x plus 3 equals negative 5. So now let's work on solving these equations. So to solve this equation, I'm just going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to get x equals 5 minus 3, which is 2. On this right side, I'm going to once again subtract 3 from both sides in order to isolate x. And so that gives me x equals negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. So now let's make sure to check our solutions so that we know if they both work. So we have 2 times the absolute value of 2 plus 3 equals 10. So that tells me that 2 times the absolute value of 5 equals 10, which is basically saying that 2 times 5 equals 10, which is true. Um, if we check our second solution, we have 2 times the absolute value of negative 8 plus 3, and we're checking if that equals 10. So 2 times the absolute value of negative 5 equals 10, and the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, so that's also saying that 2 times 5 equals 10, which is true. So this equation will have two solutions, x equals negative 8 and x equals 2. So now let's try this problem. Well, notice here my absolute value is surrounded by a lot of fluff, right? Because it has this 4 here and it has this 3. So we're going to need to use two inverse operations to isolate this absolute value, okay? So I'm going to need to undo this 3, and I'm going to need to undo this 4. So which one do I do first? Well, when we are doing reverse order of operations, remember from that chart that I gave you, it says generally we're going to follow this order, and it says to add and subtract before we multiply or divide. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Because this 3, well, it's positive, right? So it's basically like a plus 3. So I'm going to do the subtract 3 from both sides first before I worry about that 4. So that's going to give me 4 times the absolute value of 5x minus 2 equals 35 minus 3, which is 32. Okay, so now I need to get rid of that 4. So to get rid of that 4, remember I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And so that's going to give me the absolute value of 5x minus 2 equals 32 divided by 4, which is 8. So now I have my absolute value isolated and 8 is positive, so I can separate this into two equations. So this is going to give me 5x minus 2 equals 8, and 5x minus 2 equals negative 8. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve these equations for x. So I'm going to start off by adding 2 to both sides. And when I add 2 to both sides, I get 5x equals 8 plus 2, which is 10. So now to solve for x, I'm actually going to divide both sides by 5. And when I do that, I get x equals 2. So now let's solve this other equation, right? So I have 5x minus 2 equals negative 8. So I'm going to start off by adding 2 to both sides. And so that's going to give me 5x equals negative 8 plus 2, which is negative 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to solve for x. And when I do that, I get x equals negative 1.2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check both of our solutions to make sure that they work. So when we check, remember, we go back to the original equation. So we have 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of 5 times 2 minus 2 equals 35. So that tells me that 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of 10 minus 2 
equals 35, which is saying 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of 8 equals 35. Okay, so that's basically saying that 3 plus 32 equals 35, which is true. Okay, now let me check the other solution. So I have 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of 5 times negative 1.2 minus 2 equals 35. So I have 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of 5 times negative 1.2 is negative 6. So negative 6 minus 2, and then that's equal to 35. So 3 plus 4 times the absolute value of negative 8 equals 35. And so that's telling me once again that 3 plus 4 times 8 equals 35, which is saying that 3 plus 32 equals 35. Okay, so that solution also works. So this equation has two solutions, x equals negative 1.2 and x equals 2. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So in this problem, once again, we have the extra fluff with our absolute value, right? So we're going to start off by adding 4 to both sides before we worry about solving for x. So once we add 4 to both sides, we can go ahead and separate this equation into 2. And we have 2x minus 3 equals 7 and 2x minus 3 equals negative 7. So that gives us two solutions, which are x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. So now we go back and check these two solutions, and they both work in the original equation. So this equation has two solutions, and at x equals negative 2 and x equals 5. So we said before that we have sometimes situations where we have what's called an extraneous solution, okay? So remember, that's why we've been plugging our answers back into the original equation and checking. And I know so far all our solutions have been working, but we're doing this and we're getting in the practice of doing that because sometimes we will have extraneous solutions. So there are solutions that you find when you're solving the equation that won't actually work when you plug it back in. So they're not actually solutions to the equation itself. So it's not a situation where you made a mistake or made an algebra error or anything like that. All the algebra can be perfectly correct, but some solutions just won't work in the original equation. So let's try this example. So we have the absolute value of x plus 10 equals 4x minus 8. So in this problem, we already have the absolute value isolated, so let's go ahead and separate it into two equations. So we have x plus 10 equals 4x minus 8, and x plus 10 equals negative of 4x minus 8. Okay, so I'm going to start off solving the equation on the left. So remember, once again, I need to move all my variables to one side. So this is a positive 4x, so I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And when I subtract 4x from both sides, remember that x has a coefficient of 1, okay? So it's basically like 1x minus 4x, so that's going to be negative 3x. And then I bring down my plus 10, and that is equal to negative 8. So now to solve for x, we need to subtract 10 from both sides. So let's subtract 10, and that's going to give us negative 3x equals negative 8 minus 10, which is negative 18. So now let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 3 to solve for x. And so that's going to give us x equals 6. So now let's go ahead and solve the equation on the right. So remember, I need to distribute that negative to both terms on the right side of this equation. So I'm going to get x plus 10 equals negative 4x and then plus 8. So let's start off by moving all our variables to one side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 4x to both sides. So when I add 4x to both sides, remember that x has a coefficient of 1, so that's going to give me 5x plus 10 equals, and then we have 8. So now I need to go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. So when I subtract 10 from both sides, I get 5x equals 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. And to solve for x now, I need to divide both sides by 5. And when I divide both sides by 5, I get x equals negative 0 0.4. Okay, so now remember we need to go back to our original equation and check our solutions. So when we check, let's start off with x equals 6. So that tells me the absolute value of 6 plus 10 equals 4 times 6 minus 8. So that tells me the absolute value of 16 equals 24 minus 8, which tells me that 16 equals well, 24 minus 8 is 16 also, so that does work. Now let's try the negative 0.4. So we have the absolute value of negative 0 0.4 plus 10 equals 4 times negative 0 0.4 minus 8. 
So we have the absolute value of negative 0.4 plus 10, so that's going to be 9.6, and that is equal to 4 times negative 0.4, um, which is negative 1.6 minus 8. So that tells me the absolute value of 9.6, which is equal to 9.6, is equal to negative 9.6. Well, that doesn't work, right? 9.6 is not equal to negative 9.6. So this is going to be an extraneous solution. Okay, so it's not a solution that works when we plug it back in. And you can go back and check. All the algebra is correct, but it's an extraneous solution. So we're not going to include that in our final answer. And this equation only has one solution, which is x equals 6. So now let's try this example. Let's try solving for x. And so remember, once again, we need to isolate our absolute value. So I'm going to start off by subtracting 8 from both sides, and when I do that, I get the absolute value of 3x minus 2 equals 1 minus 8, which is negative 7. Well, this is a completely different situation, right? Because it's equal to a negative number, and remember we said that the absolute value cannot equal a negative number. So this equation will actually have no solution. And it's kind of interesting, right? Because if you just look at the original equation, you can't tell that this is a special case. It just looks like every other equation that we've been solving. So that's why it's so important to isolate the absolute value first because you can see sometimes we have some special cases. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So once again, we have extra stuff with our absolute value. So we're going to start off by subtracting 5 from both sides. And then we had to divide both sides by negative 2. Well, when we do that, we see that the says the absolute value of x plus 1 equals negative 3. So once again, we have no solution. But remember, I just like to point out that, you know, if you look at the original equation, you can't tell it's a special case. So that's why you always need to isolate the absolute value first before working on solving the equation. So remember that absolute value equations can have no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. When we're solving, we need to plug in and check our solutions to verify that we did not find any extraneous solutions.